Hello, my lovely listeners. I'm Dr. Mary Barson. And I'm Dr. Lucy Burns. Welcome to this episode of Real Health Health and and Weight Loss. Good morning, lovely listeners. It's Dr. Lucy here again this week. Uh, I am without Dr. Mary, but I am with the most wonderful guest who I think you will find a complete inspiration. She's a lady who joined our 12-week Mind Body Rebalance and is now one of our treasured Inner Circle members. But her story of reversing her diabetes is absolutely remarkable. So I would love to introduce to you Lynn Forsyth. Good morning, Lynn. How are you? Good morning, Dr. Lucy. I'm very well. How are you? I am extremely well. It's beautiful outside this morning. So you know, sunshine does always make me feel a little better. After the storms we've had this week, any sunshine is great. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So, Lynn, you've been on quite a journey and I'm sure that many of our listeners will relate to you. So I'm wondering if you could perhaps tell them a little bit about yourself and uh, particularly the place where you've come from and then we'll focus a little bit on where you are now. Okay. Well, I'm 60 years old. Um, I turned 60 in July, but three months prior to my birthday, I ended up at the doctors because I was been a diabetic for 20 years and had, I thought, controlled it well with diet and metformin, but clearly I hadn't. And I was actually, about five years ago, became quite unwell. I just had illness after illness. I had quinsy twice. I had influenza twice. Then I got parvovirus, which is a slap cheek in children. Then I got parvovirus arthritis. Then I got spondyloarthritis, osteoarthritis, and ended up on insulin. And so at the time in, uh, I think it was about April this year, uh, I was in the doctor's surgery in tears and uh, said, I don't know what to do anymore. I put on over 20 kilos just with the insulin. I don't feel well. I don't think I'm going to make it through to my 60th birthday. That's where I was at. And I actually get a bit emotional thinking about it. Of course. Oh, Um, darling, yes. Yeah. So she sort of looked at me very, very sad eyes and she said, have you ever tried low carb? And I said, yes, I've done that. Been there, done that, didn't work either. Nothing works. And she said, gave me some names of some of the doctors, Dr Bernstein, I think, and oh, Dr. Muki, those type of people, go out and have a look. And I came home that night and suddenly up on my Facebook feed was an ad for your course, the 12 week yeah. course. <laughs> <laughs> so, sure, Facebook's not listening. <laughs> said no one ever. And so I believe in signs. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and thought, well, 12 weeks, I'll enrol in this and it won't work. <laughs> But at least I can say I enrolled in it. Yes. So on a whim, <laughs> I enrolled. <laughs> Do you know what is um what I love, Lynn, is that you're so honest to be able to say that your brain was already predicting your failure. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. The one thing I did do though to my brain space at that point was, well, it's only 12 weeks. So I need to do everything that you tell me for 12 weeks because if I don't do it exactly as you've told me, when it doesn't work, I don't have any excuses. (laughs) Yes, yes. Ah, okay. Fascinating. So your brain went, I'll do exactly what they say, then it won't work and I'll be able to go back to the doctor and go, yep, see, yep, I did it. Exactly. didn't work. Exactly. Uh Uh-huh. Oh, we're complicated. Aren't we complicated creatures? Uh, Yes. I I actually have to laugh at myself sometimes. I think it's just hilarious. So I waited anxiously for another week for the course to start and then started and did everything that you said. Everything. Didn't question a thing. When you said don't eat this, I didn't eat it. When you said change everything in the cupboard, I changed everything in the cupboard. And that included the whole family because I'm not cooking multiple meals for anyone. Absolutely. <laughs> the only thing I do is for the carbies in the family is give them some carbs. Um, so they'll have some pasta or some bread or whatever. And now they just go off and cook their own. So they know me better because the food that you cook is delicious. So Three weeks in, I think I was talking to you and I was off all insulin. So going back a step, I was on 135 units of insulin when I started the 12-week course. 
Now, for people that may not be familiar with insulin, that's a truckload. It's a bucket load of insulin. Mm-hmm. Yes. So Lynn's not just, you know, on a sniff of insulin. You are on significant amounts of insulin. Yes, yes. And no wonder I didn't think that I would reach my 60th birthday because I was so unwell. Not only was it making me gain weight and I'd gained over 20 kilos being on it, I was so ill. I couldn't get out of bed. I couldn't stand up from chairs. I had stopped driving four years ago. It was just killing me. And I've got young grandchildren and I wanted to be there to watch them grow up. And I really didn't think I was going to make it. Didn't think I'd see 60. It's hard when people, you know, have that level of hopelessness where you just think there's no hope for you, that you're too far gone. I hear that quite a lot. People go, oh, I don't know, Dr. Lucy, I don't know. I'm too far gone. I don't think you can help me. Mm, mm. So that was you. That was me, absolutely. And if you asked my family, they also didn't think I'd make it to 60. Uh, so, you know, in their own ways, they were dealing with me or coming to terms with the fact that I wouldn't be around. So you must have also had to spend quite a lot of time maybe going to doctors and various appointments and those sorts of things all in relation to your health. Medicare have you on two, um, have you on a safety net? I didn't just break through the first safety net, I broke through the second safety net. And my my ongoing joke is if I if they had a third one, they'd be paying me to go to the doctor. <laughs> <laughs> so and that's because I ended up with diabetic retinopathy. And not only was I seeing all the specialists for the arthritis that was going through my body and seeing the endocrinologist and trying to deal with the pain, I was on prescribed cannabis oil to try to deal with the pain. I was having fortnightly to monthly injections into my eyes to save my eyesight. Gosh, Lynn, so this has cost you, like if we, if we really want to break it down to dollars term, it's cost you a lot of money. It's cost me a lot of money. Absolutely. I would hate to break it down. So when people say, isn't low carb expensive, I always bring it back to, well, you have to compare everything. Just my prescriptions alone were costing a fortune just to live every month because I was on about nine different medications. I was on it for blood pressure. I was on it for three different statins to keep my cholesterol low. I had been on anti-anxiety medication for 20 years uh, that I had tried many times to come off and never got off. I had heartburn. I was on medication for that. Plus all the diabetic medication and the insulin. The list was huge. Endless. Uh, Gosh. And so this was all happening to you when you were like in your 50s. Uh huh. Yes. Yes. And I had to physically retire from work due to ill health. And that was four years ago. Um, when it all kicked off. So what's happened now? Tell me, so you joined the 12 week, you, you were the model student. The model student. <laughs> everything, everything, <laughs> listen to everything. And then, and what's happened? Well, I got eight weeks in and I thought, <laughs> okay, well, uh, actually I got one week in, I'd lost 5.6 kilos. <laughs> 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 and I looked at the scales and thought, that's never happened in my life. Maybe there yeah. could be something here. Oh, well, we'll just see. Eight weeks in, I knew that it was no longer a diet. It was a lifestyle. Because three weeks in, you told me I could stop the insulin. Mm -hmm. And I did. And then one by one, I ticked off all my medications with the doctor. So I'm all the way back just to metformin. And that included the anti-anxiety medication that I'd been on for over 20 years and couldn't get off because of the side effects when I'd come off. It was just horrific. And I'm, I'm off that now too. What I love is that this is coming from you because sometimes I, I talk to people and go, this is all possible. And I think, you know, they don't always believe me, which is understandable. <laughs> um, but here, lovely listeners, you are hearing it straight from the horse's mouth. So, Lynn, you have stopped. So you're not on any insulin? No insulin at all. 135 units of insulin gone and... No blood pressure meds. No blood pressure, no cholesterol. No cholesterol, so that was three tablets. No anti-anxiety medication. No reflux medication. No reflux medications. 
Just metformin. Um, just the metformin. I was also on Trilicity for diabetes. That's yep. gone. I mean, it's just remarkable. And on top of this, as you know, we often, we don't focus truckloads on weight loss, even though we're called real health and weight loss, because the weight loss comes when you get your health. So how much weight have you lost so far? 22 kilos so far. Brilliant. And Brilliant. I don't even think about it anymore. I forget to weigh myself. <laughs> That's how relaxed I become with the whole journey. And I just know that the weight will just keep coming off. Not only that, I haven't had an injection in my eye for five months. Oh, my God. So I keep going back in to see the ophthalmologist and he says, mm, okay, I'll see you in another six weeks. There's lots of work to still be done, he says, but we don't need to do it now. Now, I have another friend who's diabetic and he's been telling her that for 20 years So, and she hasn't had injections either. <laughs> right, okay. So I think it's just his... Um, uh, cop out clause, um, but yeah, it's no no injections for five months. So again, that was I think it's about eight hundred dollars a visit. Wow! Every time I went, <laughs> it's so you know what? And, and look, it's interesting because we often don't talk about the cost of ill health. You know, in dollar terms, it can sometimes feel a bit crass. I don't know what or, or something, but yeah, you you're actually saving yourself a truckload of money. Absolutely. Like, and I spent that on food. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful. And, you know, and it's on beautiful, nourishing, quality, low-carb real food ingredients. Yes, and it couldn't be better. It couldn't be tastier. I don't crave breads. I don't crave pastas. My son asked me to make a loaf of bread just recently and I told him I'd need to wear gloves because I was sure that the carbs would <laughs> jump through my skin. <laughs> well, it does, you know, there is that phrase where people go, I just look at cake and I put on weight. So certainly, you know, people that are insulin, I mean, I'm sure it doesn't, oh, clearly, I mean, we're having a bit of a joke. But, uh, yeah, it certainly feels like that sometimes, doesn't it? It does. It absolutely does. On top of this, you're, I think from memory, you might be driving again. I started driving last weekend, four years later. What, you know, like that's just so remarkable, a change in your quality of life. It's it's the most amazing gift anyone could give me. Oh, darling. I think, um, you know, it seems so simple, doesn't it? Low-carb, real food, but it is truly miraculous. And uh, lots of our listeners will know that I used to Called, my business was called Epiphany Medical Weight Loss for this reason, is that people find, they find it, it is an epiphany and the absolute ripple effect through your whole life is literally life-changing. I can be there now for my children and my grandchildren. You know, I picked my grandson up from school Tuesday. He was so excited and I can go and collect them places because their parents work so I can pick them up from childcare and drop them to an activity or pick them up if they're sick and bring them home. I can lift my grandchildren. I couldn't have done that in April. I didn't do that in April and I turned 60. So not only did I make it to my 60th but I now see a huge future in front of me. Yes. So you've gone from feeling hopeless to hopeful. <sighs> Like you wouldn't believe. Yeah. Oh, Glenn. It's so, it, look, it seriously is. It's just such a wonderful, wonderful story and response. What would you say to people that are perhaps a little on the fence about doing this? I mean, I don't know if you had any pushback from family or from your own doctors or any of those things. Like, what would you say to people? sign up for the 12-week program and do everything that you're told. <laughs> do not question it. Do not pass go. Do not <laughs> just do as you are advised to do. Yeah. When you talk about pushback, my son did say, oh, it's not going to work. It's never worked before, which was quite hurtful at the time. The biggest pushback I got was from my diabetic educator. And she's a type 1 diabetic herself, so she should know better. And we caught up for breakfast not that long ago, well, brunch, and I was there ordering my bacon and eggs and green tea and she was there ordering her 
cream of cauliflower soup with gluten-free corn chips on the side. And <laughs> I sat there judging her plate, as I'm sure she sat there judging mine. And in the end, I said, we have to agree to disagree on what is the right food to be going into your body. So that's where I have come from. Even my sister said, oh, how's your diet going? I object to people calling it a diet because it is not a diet. It is a way of eating and it is a way of life. I choose to eat this way. I'm not dieting. I'm not depriving myself of anything. If I want it, I have it. There's plenty of recipes out there. The one thing I would say, though, is don't look for those recipes till you've done the 12-week program. So you've got to know what you can achieve and you want to get everything achieved. So, yes, I'm a little bit um, anal about that. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, I think that's, you know, we use this phrase sometimes that we call the loophole and our brain is often looking for a loophole. How can I do this and not really do it? Or how can I get results and somehow cheat the system? You can't. No. You just have to do it. And that's probably the other bonus if you want to look at it of being a type 2 diabetic I was not very good at doing finger pricks I was the worst person in the world I thought I could predict my own sugar loads at any point in time I had myself that convinced I then decided if I had to do this seriously if I had to see that was my that was my thought process I would get a continuous glucose monitor and oh my god that keeps you honest because if you eat anything that you are not meant to, it shows. And it also shows how long it takes to get it back out of your system. So I chose for my birthday to have a beautiful piece of cake my daughter had made and it took me a week to get that back out of my system. Wow. So yes. it's almost like my little friend that keeps me honest. He's always there. He's always looking to see what I if I ate anything I shouldn't have. And I've learned things about normal foods that are uh, normal food, <laughs> as in real food, um, that doesn't agree with my body because it, we're all individuals and that's been in, invaluable. Totally. And I think that the classic around that individual response is some of the alternate sweeteners that people use in the low-carb world. For some people... They don't seem to make a big difference to their blood sugar or their hunger levels, but for other people, they really do. In fact, what they will often do is make your sugar go lower, which people go, oh, that's good, except it's not because then your body's going, hang on, hang on, what's going on here? I need to eat something. And so you get hungry and eat. Absolutely. I actually find it's a, an accumulative effect. So while it may not show up straight away, if I have eat over, say, five or seven days, then I'll start to get a bit of a spike. And that's an indication to me that I've been overdoing the artificial sweetener. The other thing that I think um, you became aware of is the effect of stress on your oh. body when you're wearing the CGM. <laughs> I do not like a dentist. I hate dentists. <laughs> <laughs> sorry sorry dentist sorry dentists i know that you all mean very well um i had to go to the dentist for a checkup and i had an, a spike of 18 wow <laughs> yes and so i think again that's it's really important when when doctors or when you know particularly when if we say this is stress related sometimes people think we're brushing them off like we think it's just all in their head but really what stress Stress is a physiological response, which I know you've all heard us say before, and here is Lynn being able to actually see it in real time that when she's stressed, her blood glucose goes up. <laughs> and then it came back down. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the other thing I found really, really interesting was I made a casserole one night and I put sweet potato in the casserole for the rest of the family then I wondered why I was spiking. I didn't eat any of the sweet potato, but the sweet potato leached into the rest of the sauce. Didn't dawn on me that that would occur until I spiked and I was thinking, what on earth did I just eat? Yeah. And I think this is it. You know, when, when we cook food, it breaks down 
even if it's not, you know, mush, it still breaks down. And as you said, those glucose molecules, which is the carbohydrate in sweet potato, are in the sauce. Yes, never again. <laughs> <laughs> now, Lynn, you're also, you, after the 12 weeks, you joined our membership program, which is, for those of you who don't know, it's called Momentum for good reason. Tell us why you joined. I wanted to continue to have that support there because, again, it was like the glucose monitor. It was keeping me honest. It was keeping me educated. I became quite obsessed with low carb education. Um, I went off and I've done courses through the Nutrition Network. I've had a wonderful time. But I wanted to continue to be part of the group, get the podcast, get the coaching. Even if I can't make it to the coaching, I go back and I listen to it after the event. And it just keeps the momentum going in my mind. I don't want my mind to start telling me other stories and I think healing my mind is probably going to take more time to, than healing my body. I think that that's very insightful because the thing we know about our mind is that we've had you know we call them your stories in your head or your thought processes that have been embedded there for decades so sometimes people will do a plan and you know, they'll give it a couple of months and go, oh, good, I'm done now. But, yeah, the mind work can take a little longer just to undo those deeply embedded thought pathways. Absolutely. And that's what I just want need to keep working on because it is a lifestyle change for me. As I said, it's not a diet. But people, well-meaning people, will say, oh, have a this, it won't hurt, a little bit won't hurt. And unless I am really, really strong, and the only way to be strong is to keep working on yourself. And that's what I find the inner circle's giving me, as well as being able to do the course again. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's the thing. I know, you know, we're not necessarily turning this into an infomercial, but it is important to recognise that you you often need to hear the message again. And it's not that you're hopeless and you're weak and you haven't, you know, listened the first time. It's because of those the stories are old that have been in our brain and that our society is, you know, it really is that obesogenic society where we are encouraged to eat uh, sugar or refined carbohydrates, you know, just about every day in various ways. Mm. There's a great saying that I love, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. And I was ready as a student and you were my teacher so I clearly was ready, even though I didn't think I was. But I want to stay ready. I want to keep on that ready pathway for as long as it takes for me to regard it as a new habit because that's what I'm – I don't like the word habit because it is a way of life, but it needs to be cemented and I want it absolutely cemented because I've got four beautiful grandchildren and – I want to be around to watch them grow up. That's my absolute goal in life. Oh, it's so wonderful. It's so wonderful. Lynn, you, I mean, you are an asset to our inner circle. You know, we have accountability groups and people volunteer to be the leader of each group and, you know, you are a leader of a wonderful group. Tell the listeners that your group's name. The Pork Chops. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how I got that name given to the group that I'm in, but <laughs> I know. Well, we they're all called funny kind of, you know, low carb real food. So we've got the smashed avos. I think there's the chicken wings and uh, and our newest group is the mixed berries. Yeah, so but, um, <laughs> No, it's it's a great way to have a group of like minded people. And there's some people in our pork Chops group that are from Canberra and they've organised to go on little walks now that they've been set free. And that's lovely to see that camaraderie building up because you have to build up a new, um, we don't have to, but for a lot of people they need a new network uh, of people who can keep them on the right path. Oh, and I, it certainly helps to have a community around you of people that are all doing the same thing and who, with whom you can go to and say, listen, you know, this is going to be hard for me. What do you advise? Or I'm struggling or I've, I've made these choices that I wish I hadn't done. What do you think I should do? If you don't have a community of that, then you feel really isolated and it's much easier than to just 
throw in the towel, so to speak. Absolutely. Oh, Lynn, this is wonderful. You have become, every now and then a low-carb real food does feel a little bit like a religion, but you've got your own Facebook group going as well for people that need, uh, that would like to connect with you. And um, it's simply called Low Carb Real Food. It's just, uh, now I've forgotten it, it's just Low Carb Real Food. That's right. Ah, okay. It's just Low Carb Real Food. So if anyone would like to join Lynn's Facebook group, uh, you could certainly do that. Yes. And I try to share interesting podcasts, so you often feature. (laughs) (laughs) Information, news articles, recommendations, recipes, ways of eating when you're going out to eat. All of that's there and anything worthwhile I save under a guides tab. So any new members coming along can just go to the guides tab and find all the history, including the real life medicine, green, orange and red list foods. It's just, yeah, I've got a lot of local members in my area in Blackwood, Adelaide. And yeah, it's just a place where people can go get some extra support and feel safe. Beautiful. Lynn, I'm so thrilled for you, for your future, for the change, like the literal change in your life. And, you know, I can't wait to hear how you're going. Obviously, we get to, we're lucky enough we get to see you every month. But yeah, your future is bright. My future is very bright. And from that very scared, frightened girl in the doctor's office to where I am today, both myself and my family. <laughs> Say a big thanks for just producing the content that you do. Oh, and Lynn, you know, you I mean you did the work. Only six months. Like it's not it's not a long time to have this enorm, you know, amazing, amazing a transformation. It, it is for anybody out there who's worried, who thinks they're they're unfixable, that they're never going to be able to do it, you can. It is definitely doable. And I've still got a way to go. I've still got weight to lose, but that is no longer a huge thing on my mind because my I am probably healthier now than I've ever been. And I know the weight is going to come off. It's just going to keep falling. And every time I reach, you know, I've got to 15 kilos. Now I'm at 22. The next bit will be probably 30. And yep. that's huge. Totally. Totally. A wonderful wonderful transformation lovely listeners i will be back next week have a wonderful week lovely is dr lucy here just wanted to let you know about a live masterclass that we are running on november the 23rd called thriving through christmas we know that for many of you this silly season can feel a bit daunting and we've got some great strategies and tips to help you thrive through Christmas. So if you'd like to join us, uh, you can go to our website, rlmedicine.com forward slash thrive and register and we'll see you on the 23rd. Bye for now. So my lovely listeners, that ends this episode of Real Health and Weight Loss. I'm Dr. Lucy Burns. And I'm Dr. Mary Barson. We're from Real Life Medicine. To contact us, please visit rmedicine.com. And until next time, thanks thanks for for listening. listening.